Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Susan Kennedy. Much of the work of the Montgomery County Council takes place behind the walls of 100 Maryland Avenue. But in this show, we step outside those walls and take a look at how their efforts affect you as county residents. It's no secret the demand for affordable housing here in Montgomery County far outweighs the supply. A shift in demographics, as well as the national foreclosure crisis of a few years ago, has led to a big increase in the need for affordable housing. County officials are working to strengthen affordable housing programs here, and one county nonprofit is moving ahead. The bottom line, building dreams from the ground up. In 1988, the County Council established the Montgomery Housing Initiative Program, which is now known as the Housing Initiative Fund. The fund was created to promote housing opportunities for residents in low and moderate income households. But over the years, the face of those residents has changed. I think we're seeing many more families, uh, working families, even both members of the family who are working but still can't afford to live in the, in the county. And we're seeing larger numbers. And of course, the, the economy has changed things, so you're seeing a lot of unemployment, underemployment, and this is increasing the pressure for affordable housing. To help bridge that gap, the county works closely with several nonprofits who are in the business of providing affordable housing. One of those is Montgomery Housing Partnership. What this family needed more than anything was somebody or some group to really help provide decent quality housing and that was affordable. Rob Goldman is the group's director. He says MHP provides a holistic approach in producing low-cost housing. You know, we were a county of, you know, uh, great economy and things were booming and uh, now in the last few years things have gotten really tough and so I think it's always been expensive for a lot of families, uh, especially families, you know, people who work here, teachers, firefighters, retail people, construction workers, it's always been a, a very high cost area. But I think now what we're finding is the other side of it, that was, that's the sort of the supply side is very high, but on the demand side, the people, the people are really suffering. Montgomery Housing Partnership is the largest nonprofit housing organization in the county and to date has developed over 1,400 homes. The latest endeavor is located on Maple Avenue in Tacoma Park. Once a dilapidated eyesore in the community, this building is now where 36 county families call home. We've been focused a fair amount in the Tacoma Park, what's called the Tacoma Park in Long Branch neighborhoods. Uh, in Montgomery County. Many of the neighbors uh, in the area in Long Branch brought us to uh, Glenville Road because they said that this was a community that had real problems. And so we began buying some of the buildings in that cul-de-sac. We now own about four uh, buildings in, in uh, 17 buildings in the neighborhood. As soon as the building was ready. On a tour of their most recent renovation, Goldman and other MHP officials took the time to show residents how they are working to not only build housing, but communities as well. And in the process of this, they hope to change the perception of affordable housing. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the myths that surround affordable housing. And one of them, of course, is that affordable housing is drab, it's utilitarian, it's poorly maintained, it's a blight, and it's an eyesore. Nothing could be further than the truth for the properties that MHP puts together. The homes we create are homes that people from all walks of life would be excited to be a part of, and you're going to see that. That they also believe that the people who need affordable housing are, are lazy, they don't work, or they won't work, or they're always on welfare. And yet 98% of our residents are working or on retirement. Some are working two or three jobs just to make ends meet. Hey. After struggling to find affordable housing for herself and her disabled son, Hello. Carolyn Brandt now calls 7610 Maple Avenue home she says she feels incredibly lucky that a burden has been lifted. This here is, is heavenly and it's so peaceful, so quiet. When you go to bed at night, it's just so refreshing to go to bed and sleep in peace and wake up the next morning, you feel so refreshed. This is not just an issue for one or two people, this is an issue for everybody. Yeah, you know, housing is a big issue. Officials say it's getting harder and harder to provide affordable housing as the economy continues to struggle. Officials say they need to be vigilant in stimulating the market. You can buy units today routinely, particularly in apartment buildings, for far less than you could ever build them. 
and sort of focus on a building strategy rather than acquisition strategy, I think is a very expensive focus. I really would like to see more effort in terms of buying existing buildings and preserving them as affordable. In response to these challenges, many of the groups that provide affordable housing to county residents are adjusting their approach. Developers are stepping outside of the box and looking beyond the building itself. As the county's population evolves, programs that foster a sense of community are being implemented. A pre-kindergarten class that is offered for folks who live at MHP's Pembroke Square in Wheaton is just one of the ways providers are working to give residents a sense of place. And that's your name too. Okay, yeah. But they've taken it a step further, which is to really, you know, build communities and provide uh, capacity within communities. Um, so they do amazing things. Uh, for example, provide, you know, the pre-K programs, provide um, ESOL classes for some adults, for example, um, ensure that their properties are such that have, you know, high standards. And I'm a big believer in that. I think that, you know, just because you're somebody who may be, you know, low income, um, a low to moderate income doesn't mean that you want to live somewhere that is, you know, run down or within a community with no amenities, etc. You know, by having these community centers, they have a positive place to go. They can do their homework. They can get support. Uh, they do work on computers. It's a holistic approach that we feel, and, and we feel it's not just about the bricks and mortar, but it's about the community. And so, it's not just by having the housing and, and making sure the residents are doing well, but making sure that the folks here feel like they're part of a, a much broader community. In the end, this new era of affordable housing is a deeper investment in the county as a whole. But with fewer resources available, developers like MHP are facing greater competition for funding. Councilmember Nancy Florine says it's all a formidable challenge. We have to think creatively, we have to be nimble, and we have to give up some of our expectations of uh, revenue producing property. Uh, to ensure that we create the kind of community that embraces folks of all economic backgrounds because we're driving out uh, people of modest means. And that's not just people of uh, poor people, that's firefighters, that's teachers, it's our staff. What we're trying to do is see if we can find some private sector partners who have the equity that they're willing to put into uh, affordable housing. They'll still get a return, but they're going to put it into affordable housing instead of some other activities. Folks like Carolyn Brandt support the county's vision of providing affordable housing to the less fortunate. And that's the American dream, living here in the United States. It's a dream that's still alive and kicking with undeniable results. Yes, you know. It takes a burden off of you, stress is relieved off of you because you can live comfortable. When folks think of Montgomery County Public Schools, one of the last things that probably comes to mind is truant students. But just like every other jurisdiction in the state, Montgomery County has issues with kids who miss too much school. The Truancy Court pilot program is designed to get that percentage of the student population here in Montgomery County to go to class. And so far, the success rate has been nothing short of astounding. Almost 1,000 Montgomery County students have been classified as habitually truant. That's less than 1% of the total student population, but it's a part of the population county officials do not want ignored. So, in an effort to keep kids from being chronically absent, officials are identifying those at risk and getting to the root of their truancy before it's too late. I realize by the time students walk into high school, their track is already paved for them. They have to walk in from middle school with a plan of success. Seldom in high school do students move in a different direction than what they came in with. All students should be in their classrooms on time. Thank you. Key Middle School in Silver Spring was one of the first schools in Montgomery County to jump on board with the program. Students who are identified as habitually truant are paired with a volunteer judge who meets with students for 10 weeks to determine why a child repeatedly misses school. The number one reason that kids were telling us they were not coming to school is they didn't have anybody waking them up. They were sort of latchkey kids on their own early in the morning. We gave them alarm clocks. As soon as we gave them alarm clocks, all of a sudden the alarm clock was getting them up and Kids are showing up at school simply by giving them an alarm clock. I mean, in some instances, it's as simple as that. 
And then we have other students who have um, familial responsibilities where they are caretakers for their younger siblings, um, whether that is to get them off to the elementary school bus, which starts later than middle school, or it's to stay home with them and take care of them if the uh, younger sibling is ill. Um, and those students are truant um, absences or tardies as well. Councilmember Valerie Irvin has been a huge supporter of the program, which has recently been extended thanks to a federal grant. She says behavioral changes instead of punishment are key in getting chronically truant students to realize the importance of school attendance. It takes a long time in Montgomery County to actually track a child who may be truant. Uh, and this program grabs them up right away. If your child begins to skip school for whatever reason or is tardy for school a lot, this is the kind of program that won't wait until your child is absent 18 days, which is what it normally takes. Peter Gay Thompson is one of the many success stories of the Truancy Court program. I used to always be late to classes and well, when I was late to classes, my grades used to go down because I didn't know, like, I didn't know what I was supposed to do because I was late and I missed instruction time. I got better because, it, all, because of the TCP meeting and I woke up on time and I made sure to do everything I had to do before. I came to school, but I got, I got better grades now and I'm on a good road. So instead of dropping out, the kids drop in on the truancy court program and the statistics are showing it works. In the spring semester of last year, 86% of the participants graduated from the program and maintained a low percentage rate of absences and tardiness. McCarthy says sometimes it's as simple as another person taking notice in that student that can make all the difference in his or her attitude towards school. What we try to do is to encourage them tell them how important it is for them to be in school, to make school of value to them. That's kind of the whole theme of it. If you have a good week, at the end of the week, you get to pick a prize. The prize might be a Big Mac at McDonald's, or we have, lots, we have books. We have donated books from various uh, supporters, and we allow a child to pick either you know, a certificate at McDonald's or a book. Here in Montgomery County, uh, most of the kids are taking the books. Well, the great thing about this program and the great thing about regular monitoring of attendance is that you finally find out those issues. Those aren't really issues that someone will um, openly share with the school. Here are the situations. But when we find the situation, that's why we have our people personnel worker at the table. And Montgomery County as a whole, in addition to the school system, has a lot of resources. So we've helped connect people to several resources that can help them with morning child care, um, afternoon child care. We look at... Um, you know, what are some different flexible things that we can do to, to work with a family? Officials say this collaborative effort has been key in the success of this program. Both McCarthy and Irvin say getting those stakeholders together to develop the strategies to deal with truancy is a win-win for everyone. So we're just so lucky that we're able to keep it in these two schools and we hope when the economy comes back that we're going to be able to expand these programs out across as many middle schools in the county as we can get them. These kids are great kids, they're smart kids. They have a great uh, interest in reading. And so it's sort of encouraging me. We obviously are helping kids who want to learn, who want uh, an opportunity to, to make themselves better people. And the smile on Miriam Rogers' face says it all. Her beautiful babies, as she refers to her students, are excited about the program, and in the end, she says, just want to be acknowledged. Absolutely. Uh, we've been so fortunate to have this uh, program at our school. It's been very successful. Um, students are really excited about when they receive the invitation. Those students and parents, that uh, families that decide to join in, they're committed to it uh, from the beginning to the end. And so they feel that it's a special thing. They have their special time on a weekly basis, and they know that, that we're watching. Well, that wraps up this edition of The Bottom Line. For more information on the Truancy Court program and affordable housing here in Montgomery County, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching.